So hello everyone, um, this is chapter nine, and so we are going through judging model effectiveness. Uh, this is an interesting chapter, so basically we refresh a bit of what all we did about uh, modeling up to now, and then we have a look at some metrics. Uh, the learning objectives are how will we uh, evaluate the performance of our workflow, uh, how the model will be used, uh, such as predictive strengths uh, as a primary uh, um, uh, as a primary um, step, and then we would like to answer how close uh, our prediction come to this event data, and then finally how closely this model fits the actual data. So we we'll basically um, have a look at simple models. Uh, but then we evaluate them. Um, so we will be talking about the qualities of a model uh, while applying several functions, and those are uh, mainly from the Yardstick package. This is one of the other packages uh, within the Tadden model, Tadden models um, framework. So we load this um, for, for um, some, uh, we, we will be going to three case studies. Uh, and so very simple. So we load the tidy diverse study models and uh, diagram for some, some uh, graphics and then build this for, for the team. So basically, Yastic is uh, defined as a tidy characterization of model performance. And it focuses on methods of resampling, and those are uh, for answering um, uh, critical modeling activities, so such as the model uh, performance measures or performance metrics. Uh, so to um, judge the model's effectiveness, uh, we pass through the identification uh, of the modeling procedure. Uh, okay, the, the first uh, thing that we need to think about when we um, are doing a model is looking at our data. So um, it might happen that our data are not uh, all in the same scale, and so I present an example to show you how uh, different type of uh, scales are then uh, brought to um, uh, unified uh, unit measure. Uh, and, and this uh, different unit, uh, it, it's a very uh, important step to uh, look at uh, to be sure that our model result is consistent, okay? So we can apply transformations uh, through, for example, standardizing uh, the observed values that present with different unit measures. Uh, and so we can use these uh, some step functions within uh, um, a receipt, uh, or otherwise we can um, um, apply this transformation before the receipt. Um, and so um, the metrics, uh, we, we, what we are going to do is making some models and then predict the values from the model and then uh, calculate the error of the model. So, uh, which is the difference from the observed values and the estimated values. So this difference is the error. And so we are going to use the root mean square error as a performance metric. Uh, this is used in regression modeling. And so we are, in this case, we are dealing with um, numbers. Uh, then uh, if instead we make classification models, so uh, we will be dealing with accuracy. So we are going to have a look at the accuracy. Then we can make 
the uh, receiver operator curve and uh, calculate the area under the curve of the receiver uh, observation curve. And so, um, uh, as well as we can retrieve or calculate directly the specificity and the sensitivity of the model. So we are going to, to see, this is basically are the metrics that are used to judge the model effectiveness. Okay, um, just a little, uh, a little uh, recap. A useful model would include parameter estimation, model selection and tuning, and performance assessment. Uh, check for the coloration. It's a, another very important step because predictors need to, to, to be uncorrelated or have a very low correlation so you can set a, a, a cutoff. Um, and so here uh, we look at the crickets data. Uh, this data is from model data, a package. Uh, and it's a very nice data set. Uh, so we have uh, two species, uh, two different species of uh, crickets. Uh, we have the temperature and the rate uh, they, they found. So we first check for the correlation, for, for example, um, uh, between temp and rate, which are, uh, so, the two predictors. So one one of the two. Um, so uh, when we make a correlation, so we use just numbers, for example. Or otherwise, we need to transform um, the categorical uh, observation into numbers to be used in, inside the correlation function. So we make the correlation between these two um, vectors, uh, predictors, and we see that they are highly correlated. But then, uh, so what is our uh, research question? So what do we want to predict? Um, we see that we have two different species. Uh, we can uh, assign uh, and so transform these two species into one and zeros. So uh, this way we have uh, all numbers. In the, in, within our set, so apply the correlation. And so we see that the correlation between species and temperature, it's uh, uh, below 50%, slightly below 50%. So uh, we are still not, uh, so we we like to, to add, answer some questions about crickets, okay? So at, let's have a look at some visualizations. So if, you, if we do a quick visualization with, um, um, imagine that we want to attempt um, uh, predict a rate uh, using temperature. Okay, so we have uh, a rate uh, by temperature, and then we group uh, the data by species. So we have this nice two, um, linear uh, lines, okay? So they, they are linear grouping nicely within the two species. So we can see, for example, that uh, exclamationis, uh, which is the orangish uh, line, it's basically as a higher rate based on a higher temperature and so on and so forth. So what's happened uh, is that uh, we have now identified what we would like to predict. So like in this case, the rate, okay, of the crickets based on the type of species, based on the temperature. Uh, but uh, based on this quick visualization, we see that it is a linear relationship that it's connecting those information. So we make a linear model, uh, okay, a simple linear model uh, predicting rate based on temperature and species. Um, so this is uh, a, back, a bit back, backwards, but if we do two different types of uh, models, so one uh, additive and one with spline, so a polynomial, uh, and then we check the result with the ANOVA, we see that one of the two is better than the other. 
okay? Uh, and so the, the uh, model two, uh, the spline, the, the, the polynomial, it's, um, it's slightly better because the residual sum of square, it's lower, okay? And so we have even uh, other informations. Uh, what, yeah, yeah, Olaf, I mean, tell me. Yes, uh, I want to ask uh, based on this uh, model that you are just showing, because uh, you said one of the model is performed better than the other, but looking at the p value, I think we are having 0 0.2542. So that is a concern to me. Yeah. Because I think the p value is showing that uh, between the two models, I think no one performed uh, better than the other. I don't know if I am wrong. That is what I'm asking. Okay. Uh, uh, basically, the, this is a high, so the p value is greater than 0 0.05. So the new hypothesis is rejected in this case. Uh, and uh, this is uh, when we compare, uh, we compare the two uh standard uh, uh standard two-way analysis of variance with the ANOVA so we basically yes you might they they they're both uh quite similar and none of them is good but between the two you can see that you might want to pick the second because it's lower in this case just to give you an idea okay of the difference of within two type of models with two formula Okay, anything else is somewhere else uh, discussion. But let, let's go forward and see this trick. Okay. Um, sorry, Federica, yeah. just another uh, quick note. Um, yeah. I think, uh, actually a note and a question. I, I think the model is, is not uh, polynomial. I think it's just like uh, how to, um, uh, to like use interactions. Like I think if, if it would have um, um, capital I, then I think then it would be polynom polynomial, but I think this um, yeah. just like causes interactions between temp and species. Yeah, uh, the the fact is uh, you, you can you can see that there is no interaction. Okay, so otherwise they they will uh, touch it, each other. So this is just a uh, uh, yeah sort of uh, uh, you know transformation of the two parameters in a way that they are related to each other. So they are uh, concurring to uh, the rate. But let's go forward. Uh, let's go forward. So now we, what we do, as you can see, this is nice. You see that we miss a piece uh, here. So we, uh, so one, uh, so basically we don't know what uh, exclamation tonis would be, the rate of exclamation tonis would be, uh, when the temperature is lower uh, than 21 or something or something. So we uh, now have a model uh, and uh, we are going to uh, make new data with temperature from 15 to 20. And then we predict uh, on this new data and we, we check our model, how it is, okay? So we then bind the columns and we see that uh, uh, if you do a quick realization, so you see that this bit here uh, has been added. Okay, we hadn't before. Okay, so we, we add the bit. And this is uh, just a, it could be possible that if the temperature is lower, the rate of this uh, type of species will be of this uh, level. Okay, so this is nice. Yeah? Yes, I think you can you scroll up to the first uh, graphics again? Yeah. Okay, it's clear, it's clear, no problem. This is, this is our uh, observed data, not, not uh, what we model, so not predictions. So we should we sh uh, I should we should put uh, like the observed data underneath these uh, lines, which are the uh, the smoothers. So the the predict the predictions. Okay, the model, our model. But we see this uh, uh, going forward. Okay, so 
while with, with tidy models, uh, okay, we know that we can use this function and the predict function inside uh, a workflow and so using some syntax. Okay, so the first things that we do, uh, for example, this is an example with MS data that we split the data. No, okay, we already talked about all those things and let's go forward. Uh, what's happened here is that uh, we split the data and then we make a recipe. Uh, and then if we use with these other two functions, what's happened? Basically, we have a recipe which applies a formula. This formula uh, is going to be of, with some engines later on. Um, then we use some step function and then we prep and we bake to obtain a new data set. Okay. Transform data set. Uh, engineer it. Okay, so prep uh, shows the step in the recipe while bake releases processes data. So it's um, uh, there are two are two functions that breaks down the 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 procedure and within the, these two functions, as we we are going to see, we can retrieve a new data set with the transformation that we have applied in the with within the step functions. The, uh, okay, so now uh, we use a nice uh, data set, uh, which we know, uh, nice case study is the New York flights. Uh, this New York flights is a, a package in itself, New York flights 13. Uh, you can install it and load it, etc. So now we have these flights. Okay, uh, these flights uh, we transform the arrival, because we have uh, uh, the original, let, let's uh, go back to my R. Can you see my R? Yeah, perfect. Okay. So here you see that uh, this is um, mm, the library uh, and uh, this is the data, okay. Where is it? Original data, server data, okay. So we have departure time, which is this. Um, and then we have, uh, where is it? A real delay, which is on time or late, okay. So uh, this is already transformed. Maybe it is. Uh -huh. Arrival delay. Okay. So we have some, some uh, minutes here. Okay. So we are going to set the, the arrival delay if it's greater or equal than 30, it's la in, in late. Otherwise, it's on time and so we create as i shown you uh, a new data set um, where uh, our uh, so we like to predict if the the flights will be on time or or, or late uh, and so this is a classification uh, mod type of modeling okay we are not going to predict numbers but even if we can transform it so we have a binary uh, to binary class. Uh, so we done some some transformation. Uh, we even join with weather, uh, which is another um, data set, uh, and um, so in a way that we have uh, all this information: departure time, flights, origin, destination, and so on and so forth. We omit uh, some now. And then uh, um, we mutate uh, the character characters as a factor, and so this is uh, the 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 data set we are going to uh, use in our model. So apply the um, initial splitting. Uh, we set a proportion if we want. Basic, generally, it's eighty uh, percent. We could even uh, strata the data 
uh, um, our split, we could even uh, stratify the splitting by arrival delay because now we have two classes. So, and if we do a quick uh, like visualization uh, using these uh, flights, uh, which I haven't done it, uh, and this is might be uh, even nice, uh, useful, uh, basically, because if we use arrival delay and we want to see uh, arrival delay um, on Okay, we can see that there is a light, just a little class imbalance, okay, within the two. So this, we are not that advanced uh, in, the, in, the, in the book to go towards uh, solving this, uh, uh, this imbalancing. Uh, but there is a step that can be used in this case, within a, the, uh, when we make a recipe uh, that we cover, uh, so make this a bit standardized uh, in a way that they are like 40 to 50% to 60%. So they are very close. Uh, uh, and obviously, the on time will be always greater than, than late, but it, 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 there will be more balance. But we don't do that for now. Uh, and it will be for this reason, for this unbalancing thing, that it will be useful to stratify, okay? But we don't do that. We just uh, like uh, split the data uh, just to see something else. So we can do a recipe, uh, arrival delay on everything. Then we update some roles. Uh, this is a function because so, when we update roles, these predictors won't be used inside the formula. Uh, basically, in the calculation of the coefficients, those uh, predictors will be put on a side with a, um, a sticker that they are IDs, and so that they won't be used. Uh, then uh, the step date is used. Uh, and this is uh, important because otherwise get confused with numbers. Then there are some holidays. Uh, so this is based focus on the type of data set. Uh, then we remove the date that we have just transformed in uh, day of uh, the week and months. We have created uh, two more columns. Uh, and then there is a step zero variance. So, and this is for all predictors, but basically if, uh, for classifications, uh, for um, categorical variables, if uh, within the different type of uh, categories on a vector, we have just one type, that type will be discarded because it doesn't get into the meaning of balancing the information in the model. Uh, so having done our recipe, we can prep and then bake with new data null. And so we can actually see our trans data transformation, what's happened here. We, can, we could even done like step log uh, and so whatever, step core. We could have even added a step correlation with a cutoff. Uh, but basically, le let's stick on that this is fine, uh, and this is our new data set and how we have retrieved it with the prep and the bake functions. So we now, this is our new data set, new uh, set of information that we are going to use in the model. Uh, and so uh, as we, what, what, yeah, 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 all of them, you tell me. Yeah, sorry for drawing you back again. I think in the earlier on in the chapter, we discussed about dealing with grass imbalance using the strata. Yeah. But now but now we are using that means it means that we can still use the recipe to still deal with the class imbalance. 
Yeah, because this is for educational purposes, because otherwise we got, uh, so basically we are going to uh, make a simple model to go straight into, then we have more uh, in the following chapter, we'll have more about this uh, class imbalancing. But uh, for now, I uh, just mentioned because it, it's needed to be mentioned. But for now, we are just going to straight to the metrics to evaluate the model. Okay. But you're right. Uh, we can do it for educational purposes because we are going to, we are showing something else for, for now. This is not necessarily um, in, to be put in production, <laughs> basically. Okay. So, okay, let, let's set up the model. Uh, wh what type of model we should use? Since so we have a classification problem, I think it's logistic regression is okay. Yeah. All right. So we use a logistic regression uh, and so a general linear model. Uh, we uh, then link everything with a workflow. So workflow, add the model, add the recipe. Uh, we see what the workflow says to us. So it's uh, show, showing all the steps that we've done, the type of model, the engine that we use and everything. So now what we do is to fit our workflow, but then inside we need to put the data. Okay, if you don't put the data, it doesn't work. So you uh, fit the workflow uh, with the train training data, uh, and then uh, we can even see it. And this is it. So you can see this is just the head because uh, it's uh, longer. So we can. Um, uh, I think a spool workflow fit is not, uh, let's start. Okay, now because this takes a bit. Um, spool workflow fit uh, is not needed. So we can even do this. Now let's start. Uh, and uh, we see that this is the result of the fit. Uh, we have the estimates the standard error, the statistics, uh, and the p-values for each of the um, predictors and sub-predictors. So because we set like um, some extra information, some extra information, as you can see, um, we have the uh, holidays. Okay, so we created, uh, uh, with step dummy that I didn't mention, um, we did step dummy to all nominal predictors except the outcomes. And this, what does uh, is to assign a zero when this variable is not found for this bit of information, like this time, uh, day time departure time, flights and everything, on time and so on. So this uh, this is, this wasn't a Christmas day, as well as this wasn't a, a Columbus day, but, um, and so they are all zero, except when this, this happened. Okay, this means uh, uh, dummy variables, transforming the, the variables into binary classes, zero to one. Um, and so going back to our feet, we have some estimations. And so we see that the intercept is positive and the departure time, for example. So we said that we like to predict if the, the flights it's late or on time. For example, the departure time is negative. So what, what this means? Um, this means that earlier flights have are less likely to be late. Yeah. Uh, or maybe that is not 
uh, the departure time, uh, it's, it's, it's about zero. Isn't it about zero? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, almost. it's negative. It's almost zero. So it doesn't influence much uh, if the flight is on time or delay. So by influencing, but not very much. Yeah. Yeah. But what else? Let's see. For example, Christmas Day, it's strongly positive. So in one plus uh, 14, which what, what this means. So um, flights on Christmas days are more likely to be late in about 14%. Wait, no, sorry, that's not the exponentiated. So it's supposed to be much more than 14%. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, exactly. Uh, so let's go forward. And so now, uh, where is it? Okay, so basically what we've done is we build the model, um, create uh, a pre-processing recipe, bundle the model and the recipe with a workflow, and then finally train the workflow using fit. Now we are going to apply the predict function as we did it before with the crickets. So we predict, bind the calls and see the result. So now the thing is different because we are doing classification. So this is our uh, truth, okay? Our observed values, and, and this is what we aim to predict. And these are, these are the two uh, estimations. So it, as you can see, these two makes one, so 100%. So it can be, for example, on the 2013 uh, um, 6 a.m. flights for, Six one. This will be on time. Uh, ninety eight percent. Why very difficult that will be late. Okay, so we have this two this difference when we do a classification instead of a linear modeling. Uh, and so workflow predict. Uh, Finally, how to evaluate the performance of our workflow. Uh, if we have uh, a classification problem, as we are dealing with, with, with this type of, of problem now, we use that, a rock cube, okay? And so uh, Yardstick provides two nice functions, the rock cube or the rock uh, AUC, the area under the curve, um, we know what are they, okay? So they basically, this curve, in my words, is, uh, tells you the relationship between the specificity and the sensitivity of the model. So when we deal with, um, and so we can see the function, this is the function. Uh, and uh, as I, um, so this function uh, underneath, below this function, we have the area under the curve. And so if the area under the curve is um, about uh, 100%, so all this uh, um, triangle here, it's 100%. So it's basically one. Uh, the, the model is uh, overfitting, <laughs> so it's perfect, okay? Um, and so we tend to find uh, a better fit for the model because we want to pull up this curve to up to this uh, uh, left, right, uh, left, up, uh, uh, left corner. Uh, how do we do that? So first things, uh, we can use the function rock are you see and so we we can see that this is 76 percent this area underneath this curve oh sorry the all this it's not just a triangle so the triangle because 
Okay, so this area under the curve is 76%. Uh, and uh, to, to calculate, we use the truth. So our, our uh, prediction uh, data set, which is this, this one here, uh, we put this inside the rock curve, setting the truth as the response variable. And then um, one of the two, this is very important because uh, it trick. So I, I had to think about that. It, uh, so basically, uh, you use one of the two. If you use the other, it flips the curves on the other side. So you understand which one is the K um, um, of the two. Uh, and so then with auto plot, uh, um, you can plot it. If we do this, uh, if we, instead of doing auto plot, uh, we see what is this, uh, what this function does, we see that we have a threshold and the two specificity and sensitivity um, information. Okay, so we can even uh, build our uh, visualization using these two. Okay, because in the in the function, uh, so in the plot, you see that one on the x-axis we have one minus specificity, uh, on the y-axis we have sensitivity, and so if we use uh, um this we do a gg plot and we put like x1 minus um and y yeah i don't know if i did wrong Specificity, okay, and uh, and then we do uh, I'm not doing this thing very often. Okay. We also add a GM AB line. Say it again. Uh, you could you could add to your code um, geom underscore a b line to show the the diagonal line. Uh, geom underscore a b line. line. Yeah, yeah. All right. So uh, okay, we can even uh, put like line type equals to dash it, something like that. Okay, so in case, um, so you can see, and then we need to like put the chord equal. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's go forward. So uh, we see that this is the um, the area under the curve, uh, and so when we have a regression, we do regression matrix such as uh, um, what we we did, it. Uh, and then when we have a classification. Uh, this is the case for binary classes or multi-level metrics. Uh, we see in this, uh, what time is it? Uh, okay. Um, basically, this is a, another case study. Uh, it is a data set from uh, uh, Taddy Tuesday. Yeah, tell me, Olafemi. Yes, uh, thanks. Sorry for drawing you back again, because uh, this... <laughs> 
this one, uh, this is a very interesting topic uh, because we are, it, it's going to help us know how to, the type of model we are deploying to production. So I want to go back to the same area under the curve. Yeah. So that means if uh, the if this curve it I think it goes quite above the that is the A B line, that means uh, that model is very good. What you were saying, uh, if the area under the curve, if the line X goes close to maybe hundred percent, that is model overfitting. That means if we pass in a new data to make prediction, the model might not perform better. Am I exactly. correct? Yeah, yeah, you are correct. Uh, okay. I, I go, I go straight uh, down to this one, uh, which is um, another example for you to see that this is you here. They use cross validation. Okay, so you have uh, um, in this um, uh, case study. Uh, if we see uh, uh, this bit here, so this is the data set, okay? So we have this data set. We have some ob observations uh, and so uh, other things. This is an example of multi-classes, okay? So here uh, we can calculate, this is the data, Okay, so let's see that we do uh, tidyverse, okay, style. So we do this. So observation and prediction inside the accuracy. Uh, we can see that we have an estimate for this. This, this is a, a synthetic data set. So made uh, just for, for showing you how to use the, uh, the tools. So in this case, uh, we can use accuracy, okay? And so we have uh, uh, the accuracy for the multi-class, in this case, for example, is 70, about 71%. Uh, as well as we can use other metrics, such as the Matthew correlation um, and other things. Then um, if we, uh, for example, uh, from, from this data set, which is already, correlation, okay, um, basically we count the observations, uh, and so we have this, uh, these things here, and then we mutate in a way to obtain uh, the totals uh, and the class, so we have some multi-classes observations. So we know the numbers uh, and we know the percentage in the, within the class. So here, uh, we, we can do uh, other different things. Uh, we can do the cell counts uh, and compute the sensitivities. Okay, you can do some, some data transformations, uh, add the, the calculate the mean, uh, the weighted mean, and so many other things. Then you can use this function sensitivity, for example, apply to your data the observed, the predicted values. Uh, you specify the type of estimator if it's a macro, micro weighted, or micro, and then you you can uh, um, so. It, passing this information into uh, the sensitivity function, okay? And so you can see that for, for this data, uh, we have different type of sensitivities depending on the type of estimator uh, that we specify. Okay, Th these two micro and micro weighted are quite similar or so identical, uh, while the, the first one is lower. Even here, we can calculate the area under the curve, the accuracy. We did the accuracy. Okay, first thing, right, was 70%. The uh, Q, um, area under the curve is 83%. And so we can see that if we change the estimator 
uh, even the area under the curve changes a bit. And so um, if we um, group all of the information based on the examples, because this data has been already modeled, uh, and so with resample cross-validation, okay? Before the cross-validation. So we have here the false. We group by resample. So we, we will see these things uh, more precisely in the next chapter. Uh, and we apply the rock cure function and we do the auto plot. We have the, that series of um, uh, cubes that show us which one is the best fold. And so then we will see how to select best, the best model. Okay, there's a function, select best. And so you take these uh, things and you have the number. So you then grab that model and uh, using somewhere. But uh, so here you can see that depending on the type, on the class that we are predicting, uh, some models predict well, uh, for one, other model predicts well for the other, and so on. Yeah. Um, if there's uh, no questions, I don't know if you have any questions. Um, I I had a question um, regarding the the chapter itself. Um, yeah. They have a, a section about uh, using um, predict prediction metrics when doing inferential uh, inferential modeling. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. And, and and personally, I, mostly I use um, I use modeling statistical modeling for inferential um, purposes and not for prediction. Uh, um, uh, goals. So um, I, 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 it's not something specific. I just wanted to to hear like your thoughts around this, like how how to use tidy models uh, yeah, you... when using uh, when doing inferential statistics. But basically, if you 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 can do uh, that uh, absolutely without using predict function. So you stop your analysis earlier, and then you have a list of estimations. And then you decide the cutoff and, and say, uh, based on the p values, which one are uh, lower on after of the 0.05. Uh, and that's it. So then just here, for example, you have, uh, this is a nice, uh, nice thing, for example, to, to give you an idea. Uh, this is a data set uh, for the parks in New York. And these parks, um, uh, within years and cities have been ranked based on some points uh, um, for uh, the amenities, okay? Like playgrounds and dogs and, and so, so on. So within the years, those ranks have grown. Um, and uh, if we like uh, put this uh, um, on a... Mm, uh, vector and have like a new uh, points information. Like we have years, rank, city, total percent, the amenities and the points. And we select some information from the data. For example, we, if we do a quick visualization, we see that this is a, a linear model, okay? Which is steady growing based on ranking, the highest ranking, and the, the highest percentage point. Okay, so and these are the years. For example, these are observed data. So I like, for example, to, to, to see the rank. Okay, uh, it, this is a tricky thing because the amenities, this is what I want to mention. The amenities in this case, where are they? Uh, uh, are all uh, uh, of different sizes. So uh, some are for 20,000 um, by 20,000 of the population, other for 100,000 of the population. So are of different units, okay? So they all have been uh, re, um, have been standardized 
to have points that are comparable to each other. Uh, and so this is already uh, been done. If um, uh, I split the data uh, and I do, I don't do the recipe, just a, a set a formula without any step functions. Okay, just to go straight forward. This is a li simple linear regression that we can use for inferential. Okay, we apply everything inside the workflow and we have the tidy thing. And so this is what you meant, right? Is that right? Yeah. So you, you have uh, all this information here, which is now 111, for example, this case, because we have 90, uh, how many cities? So about, about 100 cities. So for each city, we have some estimations, standard errors, uh, and p-values. So now, if you select this column and create another, uh, like you create a, a vector as it was your start, okay? You put uh, like one or zero if the value is below or, or um, so upper or, or lower, no point no five, okay? So then you select your predictors and go forward in your analysis, for example. Yeah, okay, perfect. That's a great example. Thank you. But there's other function that I already made. Now I, I don't don't uh, find them in to, on the top of my head. But um, let's go. Uh, we have a few more minutes. What I wanted to show you. So this is the same procedure: predict, uh, bind calls. So we have this: the prediction and the rank. We do a quick visualization. We see that our model is fantastic. I didn't apply any step function, just applying those things. So we see that our prediction meets the observed value uh, brilliantly. And, uh, and so, in fact, if I average the result by uh, within the years, I see that the rank in my prediction is quite nice. What I, I, I wanted to show you is the geom smooth. Basically, if I use uh, my information, I can create, uh, this is my model. This is not a simple. So this is my model. Uh, and, and these are the observed values. Remember, this is the very uh, data, uh, observed original data. And this is the model that we just made very simple, straightforward like this. Ta -da. Okay, so, and you can put it inside two geoms. Using the data. Uh, what else? So uh, the estimation of the IMC, uh, the, the, the root mean square error uh, with the truth as a rank is 1.57. Uh, uh, so we can see the other three metrics, the mean absolute error and the residual sum of square. Uh, this is what I wanted to basically show. Thank you so much. I just uh, I wanted to ask where is this um, both code and um, HTML thing you showed us? Where does it come from? Because I don't think that's the the sh the GitHub repo on the shared slides from the Slack app. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 It's it's in there. It's in there. It's in, uh, um, in the other folder. But this, I slightly made some, some modifications, so I'm going to push this as well. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, but you, in the meantime, you can find it in the other folder because this was a, a very uh, court tree, which I did it, uh, while, it was my first uh, book club or second book club that I did it last year. So you find it in the other folder uh, that, um, if there's no other question, I stop the recording.
Is yeah. it the other folder from the GitHub repository? Yeah. See you next okay. week.